Tonight with that breaking news, a Wayne State University police officer shot near campus just came out of surgery. Right now he is in critical condition, but stable condition. He has been identified as 29 year old Colin Rose, a person of interest. D'Angelo Davis is under arrest after a massive manhunt. This photo tonight of Officer Colin Rose from the Detroit Police Department Twitter account. This is Officer Rose. Back in October, he had just named his canine Wolverine in honor of fallen DPD officer Patrick Hill. We begin with our team coverage from the scene to the arrest to the vigil at the hospital. 7 Action News reporter Aaron Baskerville starts us off tonight live in Detroit receiving. Aaron, you've been on this all night. Fill us in. Carolyn and Dave, you said it, a lot of information coming in every single minute, a fluid situation. But like you said, first and foremost, a person of interest has been caught. He was arrested just a, a little while ago. They say that this person of interest, he was on a bike. He was possibly armed. They believe also possibly homeless. The chief of police for Detroit, he came out here, made that announcement just about an hour and 15 minutes ago. Here's what he told me right then. Uh, there was a canine track. Um, the dog did track to the person of interest. He was taken into custody without incident. Uh, he also has outstanding warrants. So we're taking him, we arrest him for the warrants, but he is a person of interest. Where did you find him again? Was he at a house? Was he? Uh, in the field, uh, just two blocks, Michigan and Trumbull. So, of course, that is some very good news, but let's get to the most important thing. Like you said, that officer, that Wayne State University officer, has officially been identified as 29 year old Colin Rose. At last check, the school president came out here. Also, Wayne State University police chief, they said he was in grave condition, but he did make it through surgery. He is holding on right now. He is a canine officer. He's been on the force for about five years, won a whole bunch of awards, very decorated. We know he has a fiance. His fiance also, other family members came screaming up here to be by his side. It's been a very emotional scene. We've seen officers in tears. We've seen officers hugging each other. We've seen officers running up the steps here at Detroit Receiving Hospital to check on this officer. Here's what the chief of police for Wayne State University, also once again, the chief of police, James Craig for Detroit. Here's what they told us about two hours ago. He's in green in the community. He's not an outsider coming in wanting to be cops or robbers. He works with the community. He does a lot of community service. He goes to schools. He talks to kids. He, uh, he does demonstrations with his canine. Uh, he reaches out to slain officers all over the country. We cannot allow any anti-police rhetoric to fuel the thoughts in some of these individuals' minds. I really believe that a lot of what's fueling these attacks on police officers is some of the anti-police rhetoric, and it needs to stop. So, of course, uh, thoughts and prayers are right now with the family of 29-year-old Colin Rose, uh, the Detroit Police Union, obviously the chief, everybody sending their prayers. Once again, Colin Rose got out of surgery just about 30 minutes ago, still considered to be in grave condition, but he is holding on and that person of interest caught about 945 tonight. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio. Critical but stable. Certainly our thoughts and prayers, just as you said, are with that officer and of course the entire police family because I know they're worried about him and so are we. Thank you so much, Aaron. Worried desperately, Aaron. Thank you. Let's switch over now to 7 Action News reporter Curtis Jackson. He is live at Wayne State University with a look at how this tragedy in the line of duty unfolded. Curtis. Well, Carol and Dave, this was a very aggressive search involving hundreds of state and local police and federal agents. It all started at about 630 tonight. That is when that Wayne State University police officer spotted uh, what appeared to be some attempted break ins in the area. They have been tracking a number of break ins here, theft of navigation systems out of cars. He radioed in, said that he was going to check something out. Another officer arrived on the scene and then found the officer with that gunshot wound. That launched a massive search involving Detroit police, Michigan State Police, ATF, FBI, Wayne County Sheriff's Department. They scoured every building, went through lots and went through houses to check to make sure abandoned buildings checking to make sure uh, that that suspect was not in the area. Ultimately, they found this person of interest walking on the street. I think it's the grid search, probably a combination. Uh, you know, there's a bike out there. Maybe someone has seen him riding a bike, but also uh, the clothes he's wearing 
I think may have matched. So again, it's a culmination of things. And I, again, and I, I think Dave may have told you this, the resources that turned out for this, the ATF, the FBI, uh, Wayne County Sheriff's called, Oakland County offered their helicopter, uh, MSP is out here. Wayne State, despite this tragic uh, incident, are out there humping, looking. So it's really been a group effort. Now, the search is by no means over. Even though they have a person of interest in custody, they are still conducting grid searches in the area. That is because they have not found the gun involved in this case. Earlier, a gun was found. It was the officer's gun, but police say the officer's gun was not involved in the shooting, that it was fully loaded. So they are actively searching. A helicopter still circling about, looking for a weapon. Grid search underway. They're also potentially looking for other suspects, but right now, they need the public's help, and this is where the ATF has shown some generosity. They are offering a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest and conviction in that case. If you have any of that information, you can contact the ATF at 1-888-ATF-TIPS. That is 1-888-ATF-TIPS. They desperately need information from the public at this point so they can connect the dots in this investigation. Live in Detroit, Curtis Jackson, 7 Action News. All right, Curtis, thank you for the update there. Well, Simon Shekhat is live now near the scene of the arrest in this shooting. Simon, what can you tell us about the man they're calling a person of interest who is in police custody? Dave uh, and Carolyn, earlier, just a few minutes ago, we spoke with somebody who believes they know that individual. But first, let me show you what's going on behind us. We're just down the street from where that arrest took place here down at Trumbull and Martin Luther King. Right now, as Curtis mentioned, officers and troopers still looking for a gun used in that crime. We want to show you a picture of D'Angelo Davis. Once again, the man in custody, police were calling a person of interest. A huge police presence spent hours looking for this guy. They were up in the helicopter. They were also using canines. And a neighbor tells us he spoke with police to say that that wanted man is someone very familiar to this Midtown area. The police asked me if I have seen the bike before, and I live right here, and I see the, I seen the bike before. Yeah, I seen the guy. He's an older guy, and I, you know, the last time I seen him was last week, but I seen him. You know his name? No, I don't know his name. I don't know. Who what kind of bike was he on? Like a, a blue bike. Again, still a very active scene out here. Police trying to locate that weapon used in this crime. If you have any information, as Curtis mentioned, contact police or the ATF right away. Live in the Midtown area, Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. All right, thank you so much, Simon. Stay with 7 Action News on air on our 7 app and WXYZ.com. We'll bring you any new information as it develops on this very tragic story.